All right, greetings everyone. Welcome to the first part of the video for section 5.4. And now that we have some ideas down about sine and cosine, as well as how to find values related to those on the unit circle, uh, we're now going to take things a step further and look at some other possible ratios we could find for angles. So let's take a look at that. So. Uh, this picture hopefully looks fairly familiar from some of the ones I've drawn in earlier videos. Um, it's a little bit kind of a slice of that picture, so notice there is a circle here, part of a circle here, going around um, a set of axes centered at point zero zero. And notice we've got the value r there that represents the radius of that circle. And then the point x, y is the point where that radius intersects um, the circle after being rotated around an angle of theta. And we also saw in previous sections that we could define these two ratios. So sine of theta and cosine of theta by uh, using those different values we see there. So for sine, we know that, that it was y over r was the ratio. And for cosine, it was x over r. And of course, we also saw that if we're talking about the unit circle where the r value is one, then the sine and cosine value are actually equal to the x and y value, but that's not always true. And it turns out we can also define some other ratios using these values. So another ratio that we can um, defined here is tangent, which is given by the ratio of y over x. And then we can also define some ratios that are reciprocals of sine and cosine. So one of those, I'm going to denote by CSC of the angle theta, so that means cosecant, uh, is actually going to be the reciprocal of the ratio for sine. So instead of y over r, we'll switch those two and have r over y. We have another one called secant, which would be sec of theta, which will now be the reciprocal of cosine. So that'll be given as r over x. And then finally, we have one that'll be called cotangent of theta which will again be the, the reciprocal of the ratio of tangents, so it'll be x over y. And so those are our six uh, most common trig ratios. Now, hopefully you notice from the way I've set this up is that these trig ratios come in pairs, right? Sine goes with cosecant, cosine goes with secant, and tangent goes with cotangent. Okay, as being reciprocals of one another. And sometimes when students look at this, they think, man, that seems like a lot to remember. Um, but I think remembering that these, each of these um, trig functions are paired with another one can help with that. And one of the ways that I remember the pairs is that each pair only has the word co in it one time. So notice that sine goes with co-secant. It's only one co between the two of them. Cosine goes with secant. Again, only one co in the pair there. And then tangent goes with cotangent. So again, there are pairs there. Okay, so these will be six ratios we'll be working with in this section and beyond. And so this next slide has a summary of all of that information that we were just looking at. So here you see the ratios for tangent and secant. But then it also contains some identities that can be helpful um, in working with these uh, trig functions. So notice that the tangent of an angle, one way to, to define that is as the sine of that angle divided by the cosine of that angle. Secant, being that it's uh, related to cosine, can be written as one over cosine. Cosecant, because it relates to sine, can be written as one over sine. 
And then cotangent, because it relates to tangent, can be written as one over tangent, or again, because it's the reciprocal of tangent, we can write it as cosine over sine. So notice that these two are reciprocals of one another. And again, that makes sense because tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. Okay, and in case you're wondering where these might be coming from or how they relate to the things over on the left, if we take a look at, say, the ratio for tangent here, saying that it's sine over cosine. Well, if we write this in terms of y's and r's and x's, we know that sine is given by the ratio y over r. Cosine is given by the ratio x over r. So we can write sine over cosine as y over r over x over r. And notice that gives us a fraction divided by a fraction, which we know we can divide by fractions by keeping the first fraction, so keeping that as y over r, changing the, or the division to multiplication, and then flipping the second fra fraction, so instead of x over r, making it r over x. And notice when we do that now, our r values can cancel out. And if we multiply straight across, we end up with y over x which is the same thing we have over here for tangent. Okay, so that shows us that this identity here is correct. And you could go through and do that with all the rest of these to show that these do in fact work. All right, so now let's apply them. And what we're asked to do here on this slide is for each of these uh, trig functions, we're gonna use the unit circle and what we know about other trig functions to find each of the following. And we're also, it should say here, gonna use those identities we were just looking at. So keeping in mind our unit circle, first of all, note that three pi over four is an angle on the unit circle. It's in the second quadrant. And we know that on the unit circle, the point uh, corresponding to three pi over four is negative root two over two comma root two over two. And that these values here are actually the cosine and the sine of three pi over four. But notice neither of them is the tangent, right? So how are we gonna use the unit circle here to help us find the tangent of three pi over four? Well, recall from the previous slide that the tangent of an angle we can rewrite that as the sine of that angle, so the sine of three pi over four, divided by the cosine of that angle, so the cosine of three pi over four. And these values, we know, right? We know that sine of three pi over four, well, that's the root two over two here. Cosine of three pi over four, that's the negative root two over two here. So we can plug those values in so we have root two over two divided by negative root two over two. And if we simplify, well, notice that we have root two over two divided by root two over two, which we know anything divided by itself just gives us one. And then we had a positive divided by a negative. So we see our answer here is negative one. So that tells us the tangent of three pi over four. I'm gonna fill it in up here. Tangent of three pi over four equals negative one. Isn't that so nice using the unit circle? Man, I better make sure we have that memorized. Okay, let's look at the next one. So we have secant of pi over three. And again, pi over three is something that appears on the unit circle. And in fact, the point corresponding to pi over three on the unit circle, let's see, that would be one half comma root three over two. And again, those are cosine and sine values. So they're not secant values, but remember that the secant from what we saw on the previous page can be written as one over the cosine of pi over three. And again, from the point we have here, the cosine of pi over three should be one half. So this will become one divided by, we'll substitute that one half in for the cosine of pi over three. 
So have one divided by one half. And now again here we're dividing with fractions, which to divide with fractions we first need to change this one into a fraction. And one is a fraction is one over one. So we have one over one divided by one over two. We'll again use our process of keeping the first fraction as is, so one over one, changing division to multiplication, flipping the second fraction, so now it becomes two over one, and then we can multiply straight across. So one times two gives us two, one times one gives us one, two over one becomes two. So therefore we see that the secant of pi over three is just two. Okay, so we can put that value in up here. You guys having fun yet? I know I am. All right, so this one here is two. Okay, let's look at the last one now. We have cosecant of two pi over three. And again, two pi over three does appear on the unit circle. It's in the second quadrant again. And our point there, I believe, is negative one half root three over two. And again, these are cosine and sine values. So not cosecant values, but we know that cosecant is equal to one over sine. So cosecant of two pi over three can be written as one over sine of two pi over three, which we see from our coordinate point there that the sine is root three over two. So it's become one divided by square root of three over two. We are now again dividing with fractions. So we'll again use our trick of making one, one over one, divided by root three over two. And I'm gonna go over here to finish this off. So now we again keep the first fraction, change division multiplication, flip the second one. So we have one over one times two over root three can multiply straight across and make this two over square root of three. And then we could leave it there. However, mathematicians get a little picky. We don't like having roots in the denominator usually. Sometimes it's okay, but often we don't. So we have to get rid of that root in the denominator. And the way we can do that is um, again, using that technique of rationalizing, which we saw earlier in the quarter. So I'll do that by multiplying by root three over root three. If we multiply across on the top, that'll give us two root three. Root three times root three, you can check, that will just become three. So our answer is two root three over three. So we see again that the cosecant of two pi over three now becomes, or is equal to two root three over three. Okay. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.